Hello again and welcome to the beginner series in which I teach you how you could do genetic engineering at home. First of all, two disclaimers. Number one, be very careful when performing some of these experiments as they may be extremely dangerous. Be very, very careful when working with fire or when microwaving. Number two, is this optimal? Well, of course it isn't. For example, in the previous video, I've built an alcohol lamp that I'm gonna use just to create a sterile halo. Could you do better? Well, of course you could. You could use a Bunsen burner or better yet, you could use a microbiological hood. However, this is not the point of this series. The point of this series is for you to learn how you can do genetic engineering using mainly readily available items and uh, of course items that are extremely cheap. So today I'm going to show you how to pour agar plates. We need agar plates to grow bacteria. In genetic engineering, bacteria acts as uh, tiny factories that create DNA for us that we can later transform, transfect, and of course use to uh, genetically modify all kinds of organisms. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Things you'll need. First of all, petri dishes. You can get this like dirt cheap from a so, uh, from stores that sell this kind of stuff. The next thing, I'm using a falcon tube right here just to measure the amount of milliliters I'll be adding. Of course, you can uh, use a cylinder for that. Number three, the alcohol lamp we've built in the previous video. Of course, agar, you can get this from a, probably a department store. It doesn't have to be microbiological grade agar, although that would help. Now, borosilicate bottle. Uh, I did uh, find these on Amazon, they're like 10 euros uh, per piece. I know it's a bit expensive, but you can, uh, of course, reuse it. Uh, do not use regular glass. This basically is uh, resistant to, to heat and to pressure. Regular glass is not. Okay, so the next thing I'm using is LB broth. So I do buy LB broth, but you can also make this out of components. Um, I am going to post the recipe right here. I did search for peptone, yeast extract, and microbiological grade salt, which is uh, sodium chloride, on Amazon. I did find them. They're not exactly uber cheap, but uh, you will uh, have the opportunity, opportunity to use them again and again. So yeah, maybe it's worth it. Okay, digital scale. I uh, did buy this from, a, you know, just an electronic store. Uh, it, was, it wasn't exactly cheap. However, every laboratory needs a, needs a scale. So, uh, yeah, this uh, certainly worth this money. Regular H2O distilled. You can buy this at a gas station. Piece of paper. A lighter. A pair of gloves. This will not only protect you, but it will also protect the bacteria from contamination, from whatever microflora you got on your hands. And of course, the, uh, the face mask, which also protects the bacteria from, uh, from you breathing on it and so on. You can find this basically anywhere right now. This is my digital scale right here. Let's make some, uh, let's make a tray out of paper.
can use do this extremely simply. Just fold it like this. Let me show you. And then you can fold it the other way around like this. And yeah, basically you have a makeshift tray. Let's turn this on. Let's also make a scoop out of this, right? This is not the cleanest method. You could use like, of course, a, like a teaspoon. There you go. 2.5 grams exactly. Now let's just stir. And now I'll need two grams of agar. Exactly on the money. Right. I'm gonna put this in, put it in this bowl right here. get this out of the way now and now I'll need to add some water distilled water of course so I'll need to add 100 milliliters so this is 50 so I'll add two of these tubes right 50 Now we'll need to boil this. Let me show you exactly how it's done. We can do it in the microwave. Okay, so you can melt and boil the agar in the microwave. However, very important, do not screw the lid in completely. You do not want pressure to accumulate there because it might blow up on you. So be careful, just tighten the lid a little bit. You can just place it on the top of the bottle. Okay, so once um, the, the agar starts boiling, 
just remove it and give it a little swirl. So don't let it boil for too much. Just repeat this step until the agar is completely dissolved. I don't know if you can hear the lid from the pressure building up. See, it started to boil. And again. Uh, there's no way I can show you what's happening inside, sadly. Look, it's starting to boil. Turn it off again. Give it a swirl. And so on and so forth until you get... Until that, uh, that agar is extremely clear, right? Alright, so this is ready. Be careful, it's molten hot. Molten hot. Okay, let's go pour this into our plates. Okay, now that the agar is uh, it's molten, now let's put on the gloves. This is the time where you need to be sterile when you open the, the, the plates. Let's clean this table again. Close all windows if you have any. All right. Let's clean ourselves up. much as we can. Let's light the candle. You can see the flame. Now you need to work as close to the flame as possible. Let's pour like two or three plates. Oh, so let's say we're gonna pour. Let's play. Let's pour. Oh no, this one's broken. Where is it? by opening the lid just a bit and on the side this is still hot right here One, two, be careful, this is hot, right?
three. And four. Okay. Let's this, get this out of the way for cleaning. Now you need to let these plates dry and once they are dried, you turn them over. That way the, any condensation on the lid won't get into your, into your agar. All right, so hopefully this, uh, this has been useful. The next time we're going to plate some bacteria on this plate right here. We're going to just, I'm going to just leave them for uh, like two or three days and see if I get any growth on them. If, uh, if I don't get any growth, any bacteria growing, that maybe uh, that means that I uh, worked uh, sterile and uh, I'll not have any issues, uh, you know, on the long run.